Hi, welcome back to another episode of Cars and Life. So in this episode, um, I'm going to go over uh, basically how you uh, measure uh, piston to cylinder bore clearance. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you just follow a certain process and you'll, you should be successful. Um, so as you can see, we have um, <clears throat> a few items here. The first one, um, you need uh, three different uh, measurement devices. Um, so these guys are required to uh, measure the cylinder to piston clearance. Um, so the first thing I guess um, you want to do is you take this digital, um, these digital calipers, and you want to go and you want to find um, when you order your pistons, they should come with a set of documentation. And basically, what you want to do is you can see this um, black mark here. So your documentation will tell you how far or in what location of the piston you want to uh, do the diameter measurement at. So for this particular piston, the distance between um, this surface um, up to here is 0.85 inches. Um, so you use your, your, you know, your dial calipers to do that um, up to 0.85 inches. And you want to do um, both sides. So if I rotate this, you'll see another black mark, okay? And basically all you do is you take your set of, uh, you take your micrometer and you basically, I keep using basically, I really got to stop using basically. So what you want to do is, um, so each point, each surface here, you want to um, um, match the mark on each side, uh, okay? And like uh, measuring the crankshaft journal diameters, you just want to go slow. And when it barely clears, you want to um, stop your gauge and take a measurement. Okay. And these run; these were running pretty consistently, um, actually very consistently. I think within a, a half a thousandth or so. Okay, and what I did was I took them out of the box, these pistons, and I numbered each piston one through eight, um, just so I can keep track of, um, you know, which number they are um, in my lab book. <clears throat> uh, another thing is um, when you get your pistons, um, if they did balance your crankshaft with the same pistons that you're ordering, which they should have, um, it'll come with these pins inside. And what I recommend is taking them out, setting them aside, and numbering them. So this number, I don't know if you can see, um, there's a number right there. It says 8. Um, that matches the number 8 on here, so you know which piston they go into. Okay. <clears throat> so basically, I uh, <laughs> did it again. So what you want to do is measure the outer diameters at that specific location that is uh, mentioned in your documentation when you order the pistons. It should should be with your pistons. Um, and you'll take the outer diameter. Um, you'll want to record these measurements in your lab book or in your engine build book. And that's pretty much it on the piston side. Um, so, you know, you, you need these guys. And that's about it. So this is my engine build book, or at least a page from it. And um, in one, the first column, I obviously you want to list the piston number, um, you know, the piston numbers that you're going to measure. And um, what basically you're seeing here is you're seeing um, the different um, measurements on the micrometer. Um, so essentially the micrometer is um, that measurement is determined from a summation of various increments, um, which you'll read off of your micrometer. And if you notice here, air is plus 0 0.0002 inches. So um, from when you get your micrometer should come with a um, gauge. In this case, um, actually I actually had to order a um, 
three to four inch micrometer and that comes with a three inch gauge which you can check your micrometer with and the air was it was reading actually high of two ten thousandths of an inch and basically which I shouldn't ever say again um, so after summation so I'm summing all these and getting a measurement and I'm subtracting off the two thousandth here um, and you're getting a final outer diameter of your pistons and as you can see, you know, 3.6970, 3.6975, 3.6979. So they're very close um, to one another. Um, so um, the other side of this is, you know, you want to take your cylinder bore measurement. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm saying min, mean, and max. I just want to see what those came out to be. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of jumping ahead here. I'll go over how you, you know, how you do what measurements you want to take when you do your uh, cylinder bore uh, measurements. Um, so right now, if you just take the mean here and you subtract 3.7035, that was the cylinder diameters that I measured on the mean. And these are extremely consistent um, in the middle of the cylinder. All of them were essentially 3.7035. And if you subtract, subtract this um, from each piston diameter, you're going to get um, a number. You're going to get the piston to cylinder bore clearance. And I think subtracting the mean from all these diameters, I was getting like point or six thousandths of an inch. When you take your measurements on all the cylinders, you want to number each cylinder um, in your book, in your engine build book. And what I did is I mapped out um, various angles um, for each circle in the cylinder. And I defined top, mid, and bottom um, positions. Um, so there's really a total of three um, height locations and three um, angular locations for each cylinder bore. And so that's um, three times three. That's essentially nine measurements per cylinder. And nine times eight, you know, is 72. So you have a total of 72 measurements um, that you need to take um, to define um, uh, bore taper and bore out of round. Okay. Um, it's not, it's pretty easy actually. Um, it's not, it's not that bad. Because they, for the most part, um, the cylinder doesn't change that much. And doing the um, measurements using a dial bore gauge is actually pretty quick. So it's not, it's not too bad. <clears throat> so you'll get, what you'll do is you'll get a, um, a series of measurements on the dial bore gauge. Um, and then you'll, you'll record those. Okay. Um, and then you want to calculate your actual bore diameters here from those measurements. And as you can see, um, they're pretty consistent. What I've noticed is at the top of the piston, um, it's actually running a small diameter. And as you get towards the bottom of the piston, I'm not the piston, I'm sorry, the bottom of the cylinder, um, it's growing in size a little bit, the bore is. And this is pretty consistent. So sort of a typical outcome is you get a diameter of 3.703 inches, um, 30 inches on the top, 3.7035 inches in the middle, and 3.7040 in the bottom. Okay, so there's a little bit of um, taper going on. Uh, so out of round, um, basically, um, I'm looking at about five. Ten thousandths of an inch, um, and this is mostly in the top. So the top part of the piston is a little bit out of round by five ten thousandths. All the other mid and, and bottom are actually um, identical, at least within the, the measurement here. So that's that. Um, and then cylinder taper. If you look at that. Um, you know, like I said before, the top is has a smaller diameter than the bottom, 
and the worst case taper is about a thousandth of an inch. So we're getting a thousandth of an inch larger diameter at the bottom than we are at the top, um, which isn't bad. Uh, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, please send me a message, and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks.